So you planted out your garden, everything is in the soil and seeds are starting to come up. Now what? Do you just walk away and come back when it's time to harvest your vegetables? No, stop right there. That is definitely not what you should do. There are so many more steps in between planting out your garden and getting a garden harvest. In this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what I do right after planting out my garden to ensure I get loads of vegetables every season. Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. On this channel, I talk about urban homesteading and urban gardening, as well as show you exactly what I'm doing in my garden in order to ensure sustainability for my family. If that sounds good to you, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And let's go ahead and jump right into the steps that you can take to, to protect your seedlings and your seeds this garden season. So first up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to water in all of your plants and vegetables. Here you can see, right after I planted out everything, I have my sprinkler system going. It is kind of in the middle of the day. Normally, I water in my garden um, early in the morning or later in the afternoon. My timer on my irrigation system is set to go off 7.30 in the morning every morning for about 15 minutes or so, and I adjust it accordingly. But as soon as you plant in all of your seeds and transplant all of your seedlings, the first thing you're going to want to do is water everything in. This will prevent them from wilting. Fortunately, I don't actually have any wilting seedlings to show you. These guys are doing really well. It's been a couple of days and none of my seedlings have really been wilting with the exception of, I think it was one of these over here. Um, it was this little cucumber plant. It was wilting at first when I first transplanted it, but as you can see, it has made a full recovery. Um, it's not uncommon to plant things out in the soil and see that they actually are wilting within like a couple of minutes. So get them in as quickly as possible, water them in, and you'll see that they jump right back. Now, this is the setup that I have for my irrigation system. Um, it's actually just a sprinkler attached to this. This is attached to the hose, um, as you can see, kind of running back here. And that is attached to this little sprinkler system in the middle of the garden that just shoots out water always. But in my old garden, I used the exact same one. I actually brought it from my old garden um, where I had a drip irrigation system in place. You can see um, right now I have it set to go for 20 minutes since all of the seeds are still getting established. I will leave this specific one in the description because it is definitely my recommendation. You can set the clock, you can set the time, you can set duration for everything, the times that you want it to run each day, so on and so forth. And then you can also press the button for water now or cancel the watering for that day. This is such a great option. Even if you just use a little um, sprinkler system like I have over here, even if you don't have the drip irrigation attached, this is such a lifesaver and it will prevent all of your seeds and your seedlings from drying out if you forget to water them one day. And we'll take a break to observe Milo in his natural habitat. <laughs> All right, so the second thing that you're going to want to do after you water in all your seedlings is to check for any pest and be proactive about your pest control. You do not want to wait until you're seeing caterpillars and aphids and cutworms and all of the other things on your seedlings and your seedlings and garden completely destroyed to prevent these pests. What you want to do is be proactive and I do this by using two different products. The first thing I use is organic, and actually both of these things that I use are organic because I garden organically, but the first thing I use is diatomaceous earth. Now, I have a very large bag of this. I use this every single season. What I do is I take a handful of this and sprinkle it all over the dirt, all over the compost, whatever it is that is on your garden, um, on your garden beds. I take a handful of this and I sprinkle it everywhere, including the leaves, the soil, anything that is on your raised garden bed, that is where I sprinkle this diatomaceous earth. Now what this does is actually prevent the pest from getting onto your plants. If you sprinkle this on your plants, then when they come into contact with the leaves of the plants or the surrounding area, the soil, which this is sprinkled on, what happens is they will come into contact with it or they will ingest it and they will die very, very quickly which does not allow them time to reproduce, spreading more pests throughout your garden. Now, I don't do this immediately after watering my plants because the diatomaceous earth is actually um, only used on dry soil. If you get this wet, it doesn't work as effectively, so you wanna do this when the garden is dry. I water in the garden and I give it a couple of hours or so in order for the top layer of the soil to dry out. Usually what that means is I come back in the afternoon and sprinkle it everywhere. 
Now the second thing I use to protect against pests in my garden is neem oil. This is also organic. Um, it looks like this. It comes in a variety of different containers. You can get it at the local garden center, but just ensure that it is neem oil, not mixed with a whole bunch of other pesticides. You do not want a product including neem oil, but rather specifically you want neem oil and you're gonna mix it yourself. This is a concentrate. Do not pour this directly on your plants. I have an entire video on the way I use neem oil. And since I've been using neem oil, the specific way that I show you in the video, it has worked wonders with keeping pests off of my plants. Now in that video, I basically talk about how I mix it with water and pour it directly into the roots of the plants instead of spraying it on the foliage of the plants and on the leaves. Now, I won't get into specifics on this video, but if you do wanna watch that, I will leave that video in the description below. Usually with neem oil, I wait at least a couple of days after I put my transplants in. I want them to get settled first and I want my seeds to start sprouting before I start pouring this. Um, you do wanna do this before you see any signs of pests. Um, in my garden specifically, it's been great at warding off leaf miners and aphids. Usually that's what I use this for and it works really, really well at preventing my entire garden from getting an infestation of both of those things. And then of course, on an ongoing basis, what you want to do is come in here and just ensure that you're not seeing any signs of pest, um, any signs of damage, any holes, anything like that. You can see some of the remnants of my diatomaceous earth here and on the floor of the garden as well on this soil. But on a regular basis, you do want to still come in here and ensure that you're not seeing signs of pests because even with these two products and whatever other methods of you know companion planting and organic pest control methods I use, you can still get some pests. So you just want to ensure that nothing is actually crawling all of your plants and killing them before you can get your harvest. Now on the back of this trellis, I do have some little green um, <laughs> velcro looking things here um, these are my tomato ties so essentially what i use these for is to stake up any vegetables um, that need staking up you can use twine you can use this but i do like to use these because they are quite easy it has velcro and it kind of just sticks to itself um, and then you don't have to worry about tying it or anything like that so what i do is i come in here after my my plants are in um, and i want to make sure that anything that is already leggy um, or that you know is a little bit taller has a little twisty tie or something to tie it up i don't want these sprawling along the floor because that does contribute to pests and disease so anything that i needed to like these cucumbers i came in here and i tied them up already to get them out of the way and then you can see they have already started trellising themselves they've taken their little tendrils and already started climbing and doing their thing on the trellis so staking things up and tying them up on the trellis if that's where they need to be is a really important step because it gets them up off the ground. Getting them up off the ground not only prevents disease but it also prevents pests as well. Usually things in the garden get to your pests by crawling on the surface of the soil and then up the little stalks of your seedlings. Um, that's exactly what you want to prevent. You want to prevent it by putting down any sort of proactive pest control but you want to also get any plants that don't belong on the soil surface. You wanna get them up and on the trellis so that you limit that interaction between the pests and the plants. It also helps with increasing airflow, right? You don't want it just all bunched up on the soil, which then prevents disease. So any sort of pathogen also on the soil, you wanna get the plants up off of the soil surface in order to kind of have a layer in between the disease and your plants. So staking and trellising is such an important part of after planting care, you do not want to skip this step. It will make a world of difference in your garden. Now, after all of that is said and done, on a regular basis, you want to continue checking your plants. You are not done just because you planted all your garden and you did these couple of things and then you can walk away forever. That is not how it works. You still have garden chores that you have to do on a weekly, daily, um, quarterly, whatever it is. You still have to do these things on a regular basis. So come out into your garden, walk the garden at least a couple of times a week, I walk the garden every morning um, when I have my coffee, I come in through and I just check that everything is okay. I do have an entire video on everything you should be doing on your morning garden walks. I will also leave that in the description below if you wanna check that out, but you are not done once you do these couple of tasks. Continue checking your plants for disease, for pests, um, for signs of nutrient deficiency, whatever it is your plants are telling you, right? If they have holes in them, you probably have a pest. If they are turning purple or yellow or brown, it's probably due to some sort of nutrient deficiency. Make sure you know the signs of whatever it is that's affecting your individual plants, whatever vegetables, whatever plants you have in your garden, and be sure to research them if you're not sure. Just search online for you know your vegetable and whatever the sign is. For example, tomato plants turning yellow or cucumbers 
turning brown or whatever it is and you'll probably get a long list of potential things that are plaguing your plants but ongoing maintenance and garden care is the majority of what gardening is so don't stop at just planting your seeds and your seedlings and think you're done because you still have to maintain your garden all right guys so that is a wrap on everything that you should be doing right after you plant out your garden thanks so much for watching if you did like this video don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye